Dear friends, today being the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time B, the biblical readings in our liturgy help us to reflect on God's transforming presence among us, infusing little things with genuine greatness, and thus proving himself to be our hope and our friend, especially when the world undervalues us because we are poor, lowly, small, little, fragile, and seemingly insignificant. In the first reading from Ezekiel chapter 17, God promises to pluck a young, fragile, and tender branch from the extreme top of a cedar and plant it on a tall, towering mountain in the lofty highlands of Israel and make it grow into a noble cedar, bringing forth brick branches under whose shade birds can take shelter. In this way, God pledges to make all trees know that He, the Lord, humbles the tall standing tree and exalts the lowly one. He dries up the green tree and makes the withered tree bird. This allegory of the cedar branch is understood as depicting Israel's place among powerful nations that surrounded her. The young, fragile, and tender branch from the extreme top of a cedar as well as the lowly and withered tree represents Israel. The tall, standing, and lofty cedar represents the powerful nations that surrounded and plundered Israel, handing control over her from one powerful nation to another. From these nations, the Lord is pledging to pluck out Israel and make it a tree of its own. This parable depicts God's long-standing alliance with and preferential option for the poor, the lowly, and the persecuted, already depicted in the stories of Cain and Abel, Joseph and his brothers, Israel's exodus from Egypt, etc. In the prophetic traditions, the standard of God's alliance with the victim and never with the aggressor is maintained and most clearly formulated in Isaiah 61 verse 1, where the prophetic recipient of God's spirit and anointing understands his vocation as consisting in proclaiming good news to the poor, binding up the brokenhearted, proclaiming freedom for the captives and liberation to the imprisoned. In the New Testament, Jesus aligns himself with this prophetic mandate and adopts this prophetic blueprint as we can find in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Also, Mary in the famous Magnificat classically proclaims this principle of God's preferential option for the poor when she said, he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. He has put forth his arm in strength and scattered the proud hearted. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. He has helped Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, Abraham and his sons forever. Luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 55. Indeed, our God is in the business of transforming small beginnings into great ends. Hence, as we do our best in the small things of everyday life, we must learn to invoke God to transform us by the Spirit's grace and give value to our little worth. Our second reading is from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In chapter 5, Paul exhorts the Corinthians about the reason why they have to live by faith. He says to them that we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, and that house is in heaven. As such, our earthly home is only temporary and will be destroyed in time. For in this tent that is our earthly home, we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. That dwelling is the kingdom, 
that Jesus inaugurated like a monster seed with a handful of followers. We yearn to return to our heavenly home because we are like people in exile from the Lord here on earth. But while we are here on earth, we are already part of that kingdom that Jesus has already inaugurated. Hence, we have to please God even here and do His will because we have confidence that we are securing our place in the kingdom in pleasing Him here on earth. Because at the end of our lives, we shall appear before the judgment seat of Christ, where we will be rewarded for our good deeds on earth and admitted into the kingdom. St. Paul says, you must appear in prostent to bematos to Christu before the judgment seat of Christ. And that judgment is the particular judgment that will immediately happen after we die. The particular judgment as distinct from the final judgment which will come at the end of time. This is well laid out in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Article 1021 to 1022. Everything in our world here on earth is small compared to what lies ahead of us in the kingdom of God. Therefore, we cannot afford to waste or misplace our energies here on earth over frivolities. Greater rewards await us in the kingdom of God. Our world here is only the beginning of the big things God has in store for us in his kingdom. In the Gospel today, Jesus gave two parables about the Kingdom of God. In Mark chapter 1 verse 14 to 15, when he began his ministry in Galilee, he proclaimed the good news saying, The time is fulfilled and the Kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The word Kingdom in the Greek Basileia concretely means Kingdom in the sense of a territory ruled by a king. And abstractly it means kingship royal power or rule or reign that is the act of ruling. Therefore the kingdom of God, Basileia Tutheu, means the reign of God or the rule of God. And it was Jesus' mission to establish this kingdom or reign of God on earth. With the aid of a series of parables in chapter 4, Jesus taught the people about the kingdom. In the first parable, Jesus says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the land, night and day, while he sleeps, when he is awake, the seed is sprouting and growing. How? He does not know. This indicates man's inability to grow the seed and in turn the kingdom. The man has no idea what happens to the seed he has planted. It grows in the soil until it is ripe when the farmer comes to harvest. Since he was telling these parables to his disciples, Jesus was teaching them what their role is to plant and to harvest. St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. And in Matthew chapter 9 verse 37 to 38, Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into his vineyard. The first parable also focuses on the seed itself, as in the second parable. Jesus compares the kingdom of God with a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth, and yet, when it is sown, it grows and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Like the mustard seed sown, the kingdom of God possesses within itself the capacity not just to grow to harvest, but to expand from its tiny and insignificant beginning into the most valuable and profitable level. Through these kingdom narratives and parables, Jesus taught his disciples and we as well. Through these kingdom parables, Jesus taught his disciples and we as well that the seed of faith we plant may appear very small, but has the capacity by the power of God to grow into a great kingdom. God is indeed a God of small beginnings. The saying, little drops of water make an ocean, rings true to encourage those planting their tiny seeds, starting up new ideas. No matter how small, it will grow like the mustard seed into something big. Therefore, let us make little efforts to sow seeds of peace, faith, 
hope and love and allow God to give the increase. Have a blessed week ahead. The Devar Adonai team thanks you for listening and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. To follow our reflections for Sundays and solemnities, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our Facebook page, Devar Adonai, or visit our website, devaradonai.org.